Did you know Ontario, California will be all about sewing in 2022? Announcing the all-new International Sewing Arts Festival. What is the International Sewing Arts Festival? It's an event like nothing else, a place to shop, learn, and socialize all around general sewing. Whether you're into fashion, costumes, cosplay, home decor, or you're wondering what to do with that sewing machine you bought last April to sew face masks, International Sewing Arts Festival is for you. Join us January 13th through the 15th, 2022 in Ontario, California. To learn about this all-new event, visit sewingfestival.com. Hi, and welcome to Sewing with Threads, the monthly podcast by the staff of Threads Magazine. I'm your host, Editorial Director, Sarah McFarland, and I'm joined by our Senior Technical Editor, Carol. Hello. And today we're going to talk with Sue and Emma Foltz, the mother-daughter team behind the Bra Builders website and the Great Bra Sewing Bee. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> thank you for being on our podcast. Well, thank you for having us. We're really excited to be here. Good. Bra Builders is an online source of bra sewing notions, fabrics, patterns, tutorials, and inspiration. Sue and Emma created the online virtual event, The Great Bra Sewing Bee, or GBSB, to help women sew beautiful, well-fitting bras that make them feel spectacular. Sue has been sewing since she was 10 years old and founded Bra Builders once Emma left the nest to go to college. And Emma, you joined the team last summer as a GBSB project manager. I did. You can catch... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You can catch Sue and Emma working together on a great bra sewing bee class about how to handle dye, uh, sorry, how to hand dye lingerie fabrics. And today we're going to find out more about bra, about bra builders and the great bra sewing bee coming up in August. <laughs> Thank you. So Sue and Emma, you are new guests for us, and we ask our new guests uh, five sewing questions, and I know you're going to take some turns. And the first question is, how did you learn to sew? Well, I learned to sew because my mom, I grew up with her sewing, and I just always thought it was the coolest thing. So as soon as I could um, learn to sew, I think I had a Hello Kitty sewing machine. I was right jumping the gun to learn. What, what's the first thing you made when you started to sew? Do you remember? I think it was an American Girl doll dress. Um, oh, actually, it might have been a blanket for them because I think that curved seams were a little bit too much. So we went with the straight <laughs> seams of a blanket. <laughs> and let's see, Sue, this could be for you. What are you currently sewing? Well, currently, I about two years ago, I took a class with Susan Kalji. And so I'm still actually working on that dress. Very excited about it, but have been a little bit distracted. So I haven't been able to work on it full time. And then I'm also getting ready to sew uh, some panties for myself. Emma, could, this one could be for you, I think. Which fabric do you enjoy sewing the most? Um, I enjoy quilting cotton <laughs> because it's just really easy. Um, I definitely love the softness of a lot of the bra fabrics my mom sews, but quilting cotton is what I learned on and I think still remains my favorite just because it's such a friendly fabric. So easy to press too. Yes. I know. Yes. <laughs> uh, what sewing term or word is your favorite? Well, my favorite sewing term or word is actually sloper. Um, when I first heard it, I didn't know anything at all about what it was. And then I discovered what it was and I said, oh my goodness, it's technical. It's helpful and useful. I love it. So that's why I like sloper. Okay. And this one is for both of you. What do you love most about sewing? I love it because I have grown up with two parents who are into engineering. And so I've always had a heart towards problem solving. And I think sewing really allows you to be super creative and solve problems. I remember when we went to Europe, mom and I, and um, we really wanted some really packable skirts that had big pockets and we could wear all day comfortably. And uh, we had such a good time really finding the perfect sewing pattern and fabrics to make those. And then for me, I actually like envisioning something and then turning it into something real. So um, I have always enjoyed that. I love fabric. I love color. Um, I love texture. And I like putting it all together into something that's just really beautiful. 
Very inspiring words. Well, thank you both for answering the five sewing questions. And now we can go into the episode. And for our listeners who haven't heard of Bra Builders, could you tell us about the business and where they could find more information about you and what kind of things you, uh, what kind of products you sell? Uh, of course. Thank you for asking. Anyway, Bra Builders is actually just an online fabric store. Uh, one of the things that's different about us is that we um, specialize in fabrics and materials for women or men or whomever to make their own bras and underwear. So, because we've recently started doing men's underwear as well. Um, in addition, bras are a very highly fitted garment, and everyone needs something just a little bit different. The thing that's different about bra builders is it's a little bit more bespoke than it is standardized. And so you have the opportunity to say exactly what you want with respect to your materials. So some people want something more supportive. Some people want wider things for, um, you know, various things, wider hook and eye, wider straps. So you can specify everything that you want with respect to that. And then finally, the other thing that we do that's a little bit different is that we dye all of our own colors. Um, it's really hard to get bra fabrics in color um, because the minimums are just so high. And so we made the choice to dye our own. And so whether it's a print that we get in or a lace that we get in, I go down to the dye studio and create a color that will go with that. Oh, that's fascinating. I was looking at your blog in preparation for the episode and I saw your post about the spring and summer colors. And I, you know, I was just glancing through and I didn't get to read deeper, but I wondered how you were able to secure so many beautiful colors. Uh, because when I first, I have not sewn a bra yet, but you know, when I first thought about it, I really did want to sew something that was, I love color in a beautiful color. And they, the materials just seem rare. They are. In a variety of colors. It is. We, and we actually dye everything to match. So your, your fabric matches your elastic, matches your panties. And so, and you can, we even dye lace to match. Some lace you can get already dyed. Some laces we dyed. We have over 75 colors right now. Another thing that I saw on your blog that I didn't realize was the sheer variety of underwires. And I had no idea how specific underwires could be. Could you talk a little bit about that? I can, actually, because I brought a visual aid. This is our largest and our smallest underwire. And you can see the difference in them. And do they also have a different, I guess it's tensile? strength there there are yes it's i have a lighter weight one for the smaller sizes and a heavier weight one for the larger sizes um it's uh really there's a lot of different ways to do underwires as a matter of fact at the great bra sewing bee we're going to have a class all about underwires but the underwires that i carry are called flex wires or flex light wires and so these are wires um, that will conform to your shape and the shape of your bra rather than your bra or your shape having to conform to it. And so people actually buy these underwires and replace the underwires in their ready-to-wear bras because they're much more comfortable. Other people, though, find that they really need a very structured wire in order to get the fit that they want, and there are wires for that as well. Are the wires in different lengths so that they would fit? Do you have to um, buy them to go with the pattern that you're using? Uh, you know, if you have like a demi cup, it doesn't maybe go. You don't need a wire that goes up as high in the front. Say, uh, how do you how do you know what to get? So uh, it depends again on what you're using. There are wires specifically for demi cups or full mm -hmm. cups. Um, with the flex wires, then you actually just go with the wire length, and it will. Uh, conform to the shape that you've got. Um, but you've got like demi cups, you can also cut the wire off. So if you've got this wire you love, and it's perfect, but you really want it to be a different shape or size, then you can just cut it off. And then, you know, the stuff that you can use from the hardware store to, to dip your handles of your tools into, and it creates a plastic coating. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can use that same stuff to, to dip the end of your underwire, the cut end of your underwire, and it provides a, 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 a casing for it. Oh, that's a good tip. It's good. It's oh, tip. no pun intended. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> did not, did not see it going there. <laughs> this is going back a bit, but how did you initially get into this business? 
Well, um, Emma was getting ready to go off to college and I was looking at what do I want to do for my next thing? Because I w had been a homeschool mom for most of her uh, her her uh, her school years. And um, I have always loved to sew, but I knew that I wouldn't be able to do much to make a living in sewing because fabric is expensive and clothes are cheap. And time is valuable. And it takes a lot of time and a lot of fabric to do something really nice. And then I saw a craftsy class on bra making. And after watching a couple of these classes, I said, oh, my goodness, here's something that you can make that doesn't take much fabric and it doesn't take much time. And so therefore there is actually an opportunity there to do something. And the other thing that's important is that it's such a highly fitted garment and that ready to wear bras are very expensive. And so you can, you can buy a kit from me for $25 and make two bras that you would probably spend a couple of hundred dollars for in the store. Um, and so I started thinking, I'll be a custom bra maker. I had all these people saying, can I please be your first customer? And then I went to my class to go learn how to be a custom bra maker. And the gal who was there said, I don't want another person who can be a custom bra maker. I want somebody who wants a fabric store. And I said, oh, I love fabric. And so, uh, <laughs> and, and that's how we got to where we are. Yeah, but for anyone else who's looking for a next step and is interested in custom bra making as a way to really make money with sewing, um, it, for something people are already ready to pay um, a more substantial amount of money for, we have some really uh, um, experienced and amazing custom bra makers at the Great Bra Sewing Bee who are going to be teaching a class specifically on how to take this hobby to the level of being a business. I was going to ask about, you know, fitting and fitting is a, is an issue if you're working with a lot of different custom clients. I think for yourself, you have a lot of time to, you know, you make one and you tweak it and you make another one until you get the fit you like with the pattern that you prefer. But if you have a lot of customers with lots of different body types, how, how difficult is it to, to just learn to fit them in, in one round or do you do muslins and lots of multiple fittings? Most of the custom bra makers that I know of will take a lot of measurements and mm -hmm. use what they know and then create a muslin and then they send it to the customer and have them try it on because most of the time your custom bra maker is not in your town. Your custom bra maker is far away. And so they'll send the, the bra to that customer and they'll try it on usually over some Skype or Zoom or something like that. And they do some various fitting elements and then it goes back to the bra maker and she makes some changes and then it comes back. So sometimes it can take two or three fittings for a hard one. Most of them though, they can do something for a fully custom bra in usually one fitting and then the, the final garment, um, which is why a custom bra can be kind of expensive. What are the main fitting issues? Are they, uh, does it tend to be the cup size and shape and style, or is it the band that doesn't fit people, or is it a mix of both? It's actually kind of the intersection of the cup and the band. And if you look at the Great Bra Sewing Bee, we have lots and lots of classes on various elements of fit because fit is such an important thing. It's easy to sew a bra. It is trickier to fit a bra. And so one of the things that we spend a lot of time on is fit at the Great Bra Sewing Bee because you've got small cups on a big frame. You've got people with very large cups on a very small frame. You've got people with a lot of breast tissue. So, you know, if we think about the, the large cup um, small frame, which is a very common problem. We've got a class for that, right? Emma? Yeah. So that's called um, large cup considerations. And it's taught by, it's co-taught by two teachers. It's a two hour live class. So people will be able to ask questions as the class goes. And the teachers will also be um, hanging around on Facebook to answer questions that didn't get answered during the live session. Um, and they are incredibly experienced. They have been both in the ready-to-wear and custom lingerie industry and are just absolute experts at their craft. And then we've got the opposite with the small cup and large frame where you really want to take a, you've got a large underwire, but not much projection. And so there's a completely different set of things that you do to fit that. 
And Emma, we've got something for that too, don't we? Yeah, that's called um, Great Things Come in Small Packages. And so that's another <laughs> um, wonderful expert that we have teaching that class, Liz from Liz Sews, is going to be addressing those issues. Sue and Emma, I wanted to ask you about um, size inclusivity in bra patterns, because I know that there's a a very avid plus size sewing community that would really like to sew lingerie, I think. And I know they're kind of underserved in regular patterns for clothing. Is that a problem for bra patterns too? Um, Yes and no. So if you've got that large band size um, issue, then what you'll want to do is the first thing you want to do is, is use a really supportive band material. I've got, for example, a firm weight power net, which is great for the gals who have those really large frames. Um, the second thing you want to do is make sure that it's plenty high on the side so that you've got enough space here. A lot of what happens in the ready to wear is all they're doing is kind of covering the bus. They're not supporting it. And so when you're looking at how to support, uh, your bust on your large frame is that you want to kind of look at your, um, the kind of the bottom of your underwire, almost as though you didn't have any extra, um, shape crosswise that you're working you want to bring that forward so you're going to make your underwire a lot taller instead of broader so a lot of the ga- the patterns that i've seen or the bras that i've seen for this issue just kind of have no structure in them at all you actually want extra structure goes up higher on the under the arm and in the front and with more projection and you can actually lose probably 15 pounds of what you look like by doing that the other thing you can do is actually um, on the uh, under on your underarm seam you can add length right there so that it gets around you without any trouble at all so that you handle the cup and the band separately from one another Yeah. And I also just wanted to jump in and say that last year at the Great Bra Sewing Bee, um, we had a lot of people asking us for more size inclusivity. Um, And so that was something that this year was top of our priority list in how we planned the event. So we not only have a really specific class on um, addressing kind of those um, size inclusivity issues, Um, But we also have two sew-alongs. We have a panty sew-along and a bra sew-along that are targeted to that. For the bra sew-along, we're having our custom bra maker, um, Linda from Uplift Custom Bras, um, do one on the Ingrid. And um, this bra pattern does a really good job of addressing um, that really large chest size in a way um, that's really um, supportive and comfortable, kind of like what my mom was talking about. And then secondly, we also wanted to address that in panties because we found last year that that was nearly impossible to do as we were trying to support some of our clients. Um, And so we've partnered with an organization called um, Apostrophe Patterns, who has a specific computer program where you can input your measurements and it will output um, panty patterns specifically made towards your measurements. And so they will be doing a sew along, a panty sew along for us that kind of targets everybody, including those um, more plus size and um, women in need of size inclusivity. Uh, The final thing just to add on the Ingrid, the Ingrid is a great non-wired option and it also can come with a front opening. So that's great for like the elderly or somebody who can't get their arms behind their back anymore and that sort of thing. And the second pattern that we have that's really good for size inclusivity is the Josie Plus, which is a little bit more of an underwired traditional bra. What what would you call a big cup size? What where where do you go from what you would think of as small to average to larger? Well I would say that, you know, if you look at the difference between your band and your full bust or the, your your under bust and your full bust uh, of more than say five inches, that's starting to get to be a larger cup. And you'll know that you've got a problem with fitting your larger cup because your band will usually right up in the back because you need more cup um than than your normal band size would allow. Like we I've I know gals who are like a 32 M. Um, and so very much difference between their, their frame and their cup size. Um, so it often will run up right up in the back and then you'll have a lot of pressure on your shoulders because your band can't support because it's not doing the work. And so your shoulders are doing all the supporting. Thank you. That was really what I was trying to find out because I do think that people are, I mean, we know that most people wear the wrong size bra and it's, yes. 
partly trying to compensate for the wrong cup size with the band size that is also incorrect. And you, you kind of want to know what to be looking for. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I was thinking about that. I mean, I think discomfort is probably a clear sign. But what are some of the signs that you have that you might be wearing a bra that's not right for you? Well, certainly discomfort is one. Um, and uh, I know a lot of women who just say, I just want to take this off. But you should have, if in a full coverage bra, your um, the, the center gore of the bra it should. It doesn't always have to tack exactly to the chest, but it should be pretty darn close to your chest wall. So if the center gore of your bra is like three inches away from your chest wall, that says that your cup is too small. If you've got breast tissue that's coming out the top of the cup, either under the arms or at the at the top of the cup in the front, then that says that that your cup is too small. Um, similarly, if you're wearing, you know, um, a lot of gals like those foam cup bras now. And if you're wearing one of those and what you've got is kind of a big line where your bra is underneath your t-shirt, well, that says that your cup is too big. So, yeah. And if you're kind of wondering how might I fit in here? One thing that's also part of what the Great Bra Sewing Bee offers is that um, exclusive to our Great Bra Sewing Bee participants, they can purchase um, one-on-one Zoom fit sessions with some of our um, experts who are teaching during the Great Bra Sewing Bee. And they can sit on Zoom with them and really help them assess what problems they have and what patterns and alterations might be the best solution to those. Oh, that sounds very helpful. So the Great Bra Sewing Bee, we talked about it a little bit in the intro, but when is it exactly? That is August 4th through 8th, 2021. So August 4th is a special day set aside just for beginners. And then August 5th through 8th is for everybody else um, and the beginners. So we have some really specific beginner classes through there, but we also have classes individualized to all levels of experience with bra sewing so that everyone can really come together and gain something beneficial for them. Oh, sure. Would you uh, be able to mention any of the instructors that you have planned? Listeners to this podcast might be familiar with Pamela Leggett. She is teaching a class and a sew along about slips. We also have Jennifer Fairbanks of Porcelain, Maddie Kulig of Madeline Intimates. We have Linda from Uplift Custom Bras. She's out of Canada. We have Jenny, and she's from Australia, and Helen is from New Zealand. We have Allison. Alice, people might know Allison Smith. She is uh, in the UK. And then Badil from um, Sweden. Mm-hmm. And then we've got Lily from Lilypod Designs and Liz from Liz Sews. Who else do we have, Emma? Oh, my goodness. Several, several more. But you can check those out on our website, which is www.greatbrasowingbee.com. Okay. Is it now? Do you, do you sign up for the whole thing, or can you sign up just for one or two classes, or, or how does that work? Yeah, so um, it's really kind of interesting to run a virtual conference and kind of figure out how you're going to do registration. So what we decided to do is that you can sign up either for the beginner day, for the beginner day plus the weekend, um, and or just the weekend. But what's also unique about the fact that we're a online conference is that all of our classes are recorded. So another thing you can kind of bundle in with your registration or you can buy um, for a less good price because you didn't bundle it at first after the fact is extended access. And so that lets you go back and rewatch any of the classes for a full year after the conference ends on August 8th. And how many years have you been doing the Great Bra Sewing Bee? This will just be our second year, actually. Last year, we uh, learned a ton and were able to pull off an awesome event that people were really excited about. But this year, we have lots of really cool new developments. Do you anticipate yeah. doing it in person at some point? Or is it, will it be virtual now that you've worked that out? Well, I think that what if as I look down into the future, this is a longer term future, not a short term. I'd like to see kind of a of a hybrid event where it will always be available online. I mean, after all, it is such a, a economical way to attend a sewing conference because you don't have to pay the travel and you don't have to pay for the hotel and that sort of thing. But I'd like to have a hybrid so that we can um, also do an in person event too, because there's a lot of people who really like that as well. So um, I see it developing in a way that we can do both. What are what are some 
sorry, to anyone who hasn't made a bra yet, um, if you met someone who was thinking about making one, how would you encourage them to go about it or to get started? Well, I will tell you that sewing a bra is not a tricky thing. If you can sew a curved seam, and if you can do a zigzag stitch, and if you can do a straight stitch, then you can make a bra. It's not that tricky to sew. The tricky part is to fit. Yeah, and I would also say, as someone who is newer to bra sewing, um, that after attending the Great Bra Sewing Bee last year, I was so encouraged. I felt really well-equipped um, to start by just measuring correctly and um, getting jumping in with a pattern that's well-suited to my needs. Um, but I was also really encouraged that there is so many people who have the same fitting issues as I do um, and that I can connect with them um, and even bra makers who are really willing to share their secrets. What kind of fitting issues do you think maybe the ready-to-wear bra making industry is not addressing? Well, if you think about their their business model, they need to create a single size and run 10,000 copies of it at a minimum. And finding 10,000 women that are that highly fitted, it, it's it's really difficult. They have to do that one color one lace package and whatnot and one size. So 10,000 pieces. So they're going to try and conglomerate people together to be able to, to hit that well. What I've discovered, what I think is the people who like us are kind of those large cup, small frame, small cup, large frame people that are naturals for, um, for, for the, the folks who come to us, which means that they're not being well served out there in the bra industry. There's some new things. There's some some bra makers that are doing, or you know, commercial bra makers that are doing more interesting things. Um, and like most of them have a variety of cup styles because depending upon what your breast shape is like, you'll want a different style of cup. Um, then, so there are things that are addressing some of that, um, but. There is so much more that can be done. It's almost an impossible job. So much, so much individual difference. So Emma mentioned liking to work with the fabrics that you make bras out of. So typically, what kind of fabrics do you incorporate in a bra? Well, you've got your cup, and your cup should be a non-stretch fabric, something that's really stable. Um, and the fabric that I sell is actually a nylon product because that makes it easier to dye and it's also more comfortable and it I find it creates a nicer shape. Uh, polyester, it, it doesn't um, curve around as easily. It's a little bit more sharp. It's hard to say, but it just doesn't make that nice even curve. Um, so I like the nylon better than the polyester, but you want something nice and non-stretch for your cup. Um, and they're all really very specific. You can't just go to the regular fabric store and get these fabrics. Um, you can get Trico in some places, and there are certain Tricos that work really well, and they have to be work done in specific ways. So that's kind of your cup. And then your band is always in a power net or a power mesh, and that is something which will breathe, that breathes but also will stretch but gives a a resistance to that stretch. So that lets you be able to breathe as well as keeping things really well supported. So that's a stretchy part. And then your elastics that you use are also very specific to bra making because if you just go get your, go down to Joanne Fabrics or whatever and get some elastic, it's not going to have the tensile strength and it's not going to have the comfort that you need for something that's going up right up next to your your skin. And so there are specific elastics that you use. You'll need a, sp a thing called channeling, which is the little tube that the underwear goes through. Um, and so you'll need something like that. There's little bits like rings and slides to make the straps adjustable, although you don't have to make your straps adjustable. And then there are the hook and eyes in the back. So those are, you know, those can be made out of either nylon or polyester. You can actually make your own. Um, and so, um, and, but to do that, you want kind of the lingerie actual hooks and eyes rather than the kind that you would just get 
from off the shelf kind of thing. They, they will work a lot better for you. So there's just lots of really specialized things and they're not commonly uh, available. When I was, uh, I'm doing a class actually on the great, at the Great Ross Sewing Bee where I'm going to talk for an hour about the various things that make things suitable or not suitable for bra making. Yeah, I was going to say, that is an awful lot of information, Mom. Um, <laughs> yeah, and sorry. kind of overwhelming that <laughs> no, they're not going to purchase no. it all. Um, but during the Great Bra Sewing Bee, we're really seeking to address that because that's a question we saw come up a ton last year. She just did one class on materials last year. And so this year we're addressing materials both at a beginner level and at a more intermediate advanced level, as well as getting a panel of a lot of our instructors who don't own shops and who are in different parts of the world to come together and have a discussion about sourcing bra materials worldwide. Because if you are trying to source bra materials from Australia, that gets really tricky. And even sourcing them in the US, sometimes you're looking for something a little more price sensitive. And so one of our instructors on that pa panel has done a lot of work with trying to source from Alibaba as an individual and kind of figuring out what that looks like. So um, if you have more questions about that or felt a little bit overwhelmed like I did, definitely check out our materials classes at the Great Bra Sewing Bee. I, I love your website because your your color matched findings and all everything that all the fabrics and elastics are great. My daughter got into making bras last summer and she, um, I had a lot of stuff in my stash that was, you know, various, various types of elastics that were lingerie, supposedly lingerie elastics and some lace and various things. And then she tried to put it all together and dye all the different parts to match. And she was somewhat successful, but not entirely because if mm -hmm. it's polyester versus nylon, you don't get the same. And then because it was sheer, she wanted to make the elastic to match her skin tone. And again, sometimes it turned out a little beige and sometimes it just didn't die at all. And the whole thing was just, she was so excited to get going and so frustrated by it ultimately and, and really wanted immediate results. You know, she wanted to be sewing by three hours from when she got the idea to do it. <laughs> Very unrealistic for most people who sew at all. But yeah. um, so that's why I was kind of asking you about your, your, um, your sewing bee this, this, at the end of the summer, because it occurred to me that she might like to join in and <laughs> find out a little bit more about about what to do. Yeah. yeah and I will be actually having a dye class. So she'll be able to yeah. take white stuff and yeah. make it her very own colors. Either that or just or just buy everything matching to start with, which would probably be a lot easier. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> So I want to go back to something you said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that you have started to carry supplies for men's undergarments. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about that and like what are some issues you're seeing men have with ready to wear undergarments? So I, I'll start this story out with my husband who uh, I would buy his underwear and I bought a good name brand underwear from the store and they were fine. He liked them fine. Um, and after just a short while, like maybe two or three months, there were holes in them, which I found very discouraging. Um, and so then I bought him good underwear, right? So not so like these fancy sacks underwear or whatever. And he said, oh, I love these underwear. And I said, OK, um, <laughs> because and I didn't know what it was, but there are certain elements inside the underwear that make it more comfortable to 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 um, to wear for a man. and. Um, and so I said, okay, well, that's a great way to that. And, the, but those were very expensive. I, I have to say really expensive underwear. And so we've got now the elastic for it, the little lining on the inside to keep their parts apart. Um, and, um, and really beautiful, soft. I think men are even more fussy than women are with respect to softness in their undergarments. And uh, one of the, the, my signature fabrics, I guess you could say, for underwear is actually a beautiful bamboo lycra fabric. And I've got some now that will be, because we're doing a men's underwear class at the Great Bra Sewing Bee. And it has prints and stuff that, are, that a man, I think, will really like. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds very comfortable. Yeah. You know what? The time has gone by so quickly. We are actually at the end of the episode. So I want to thank you, Sue and Emma, for your time. And I wish you great success with the great bra sewing bee. And thank you. thank you to all our listeners, Sue, for joining us for this episode. And you can visit our website, threadsmagazine.com, to read the show notes for this episode. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 
Thank you for listening. Follow Threads on social media and visit threadsmagazine.com to view show notes for this episode. While you're on the site, check out Threads Insider, our online membership with exclusive access to expert sewing techniques. Until next time, keep on sewing with Threads.